let's start from the beginning. Sure. And uh, if you want to just obviously yeah. let everyone know sort of the history. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Settle in. This might take a few hours. <laughs> but, uh, I'll, I'll let this is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll be brief because there, it's a great story, and 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 I'll and I'll say this before I start. Roberto tells the story so well because it's his story, but we've all heard it. We all, we've all told it, and yeah, it's yeah. become like a, a great a great folk song. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's all in the telling of the story, but but in its most simplest form, uh, Robert is uh, 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 like a lot of young men in the '60s listening to the Beatles and the Stones, and wanted to play guitar as a left-handed player. He was forced to play a right-handed guitar, so he couldn't develop his guitar playing. So he decided the next best thing was to just be a really good guitar tech and and learn right. how to fix guitars and set them up, and and he developed quite a reputation for that. Um, but fast forward to the early 70s, he had met a gentleman. It's, 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 it's just a great story, but in its most simplest form, serendipity, if you like. They just happened to meet a, 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 a gentleman from the town of La Patrie, which where we still have our, our factory, met up with Robert. So it's just a man who had done some work building guitars with a younger gentleman named Robert who had done some work setting up guitars and developed quite a reputation in Canada, the eastern part of Canada, as a, as a really good technician. They met up. They decided to start working together. 1972, the birth of our first guitar line, Norman Acoustics. Right. In Canada, Norman Acoustics still enjoys a tremendous uh, reputation. It's, it's, a, it's a Canadiana heritage brand. And to a French Canadian particularly, uh, if they have an old Norman from the 70s, it's, it's a, it's yeah, a thing it's of pride. Like a heritage thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like an American with a, an old Martin or a Gibson. Yeah. I, I can understand to Americans because it's got this historical uh, uh, significance. significance. Yeah, yeah. 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 In Canada, that's Norman. Cool. So, yeah. And I remember being, you know, not, not to age my, myself, but I remember being a young player and thinking Norman was like, man, if you can never get a, Gor a Norman, you've done something right, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. so Norman came first, and, uh, and, and he worked on that for the best, uh, better part of the 70s, where he also introduced it here in Europe, France and the UK, and slowly, you know, just about everywhere else. But in the 80s came the rest, Godin, and then followed by Siegel, uh, Simon and Patrick, La Patrie, of course, a and and... Uh, that's 47 years ago, you know, yeah. or 46 yeah. years ago now. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you're still, That's, obviously still based in Canada? Yeah, it's always, mm -hmm. and uh, we've always been. So we had the Lapitry, which was the first factory, and still our main acoustic factory. Right. And then we have another, well, let me, let me say this. We've got six factories in four locations. Uh, three of those locations are in Canada. One is in the U.S., in a town called Berlin, New Hampshire, which is an American state, maybe 100 miles or so from the Canadian border. And uh, that, that's that been good. That's been smart logistically. And uh, it's given us a, a, a foothold into the U.S. market. So just okay. logistical and, 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 you know, another reason just to have an American factory. And a lot of our electric guitars are finished there, uh, but built in Canada. So all our factories are in Canada. Uh, and we have a head office in Montreal right in the city. But the factories are all located in smaller towns, I'd say about two, three hundred kilometers outside the city. Right. Okay. And uh, and and always have been. So yeah, four factories, uh, six factories. Sorry, in four towns. But yeah. the Patry, just to carry on from what Franco was saying, is <clears throat> a tiny, tiny, tiny little village. Blink and you miss it. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Right. And there's about six hundred, seven hundred people think that that, that yeah. live there. Yeah. Yeah. And. It would be fair to say ninety percent, ninety five percent work for the yeah. It's for, really for, for it's, wow. yeah. It, it's really something special to it, see. It's like a little community of yeah. guitar builders, and there's yeah. there's a there's there's a restaurant, there's a filling station, there's a general store. Yeah, I mean, I think that speaks to 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 North American, you know, um, uh, manufacturing. Actually, sadly, uh, you know, there was a time when we had a lot of industry and farming and all these things up there. A lot of that sadly has gone away. But as a Canadian company, we've kept. You know that that factory open, yeah. and uh, and kept the jobs. And of course, Princeville is another town in another direction from Montreal, also about two hundred kilometers away, uh, slightly bigger town, so mm -hmm. maybe a few thousand. But we employ a few hundred at that factory. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Richmond, which is our electric uh, factory and our biggest one and the newest. It's been there since I'd say maybe the nineties, um, and it's and it's just we're running out of space. You know, <laughs> to be honest, you know, we talked about this a little earlier. Like we've got. We've got, so in Lapa Tree, for example, we've got uh, the, the main factory that builds the guitars, and we've got another smaller factory, maybe half a mile away, up, we call it uphill and downhill. The other factory only makes necks for all the guitars, for all okay, the brands, right. and small guitars. So small instruments, like, for example, the M4s, the little dulcimer things that we uh, make, yeah, yeah. mandolins, ukuleles, so anything that's a small instrument and necks is made in one factory. 
and then these necks are distributed around to the other right. factories. And uh, within La Patrie Main Acoustic Factory is a workshop, uh, atelier as we say in French, that is kind of like a high end uh, you know, top price guitars where we have uh, uh, the artist uh, series finished there. And, and so there, there's, there's like a, a lot work, of workshop to, within a workshop. There you go. Yeah, well right. said. Type, type thing. Yeah, yeah so. and, in, and in Princeville, we've got two factories in one location separated by a wall. And it's two different staffs, two different things. One is just a wood factory that cuts and prepares and, and dries out all the wood that we need for building. And the other one builds some of our acoustic guitars, which is the Art and Luthery and the Fifth Avenue series. Cool. And then, so that's, yeah, and then plus the American one, that's six factories, four locations, head office, upwards of 700 plus employees. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, it's... it's we're a good little company, as we like it, to say. It, it, yeah. Doyle Dykes is some somebody that uh, the watchers might have have, have, have heard. Mm. Um, he's basically been doing some stuff with us, so he's he's a kind of a endorsee, and he, yeah. he does some clinics yeah. for us. Yeah. And we've got a new signature model. We've got uh, his signature. Yeah, he's done now, a signature yeah. multi act with mm -hmm. us, which is right. which is a really cool guitar. Yeah. He was with you at Nam, I believe. Uh, or Frank, he was at Nam. Yeah, yeah, Nam yeah. Here, huh? But he, the reason I bring him up is he actually said something, and he said, um, "The thing with GoDaddy, he said you're you're a sleeping giant. Yeah, mm. so a big company, and we're we're coming up and we're waking up with this new. Yeah, it's not the way things have. Obviously, you go through different different phases in 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 the trade, as it were. You know, and Robert's seventy now, yeah. and 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 the fact of the matter is, we've always worked hard. We've always done our best to to to, to market and to push and, yeah. and and do whatever we can, but. What's what's changed is is Simon Godan, as Franco was saying, sort of coming uh, kind of into the light, really, mm -hmm. and kind of going, look, you know, I think mm -hmm. we can do this, I think we can do that, do, mm -hmm. do, do that. So that kind of ideology of Godan being that brand that is is massive and, and kind of yeah. a sleeping giant is kind of what we're waking up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, it's like. And, 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 and if I can add on to that, part of waking up is Simon working with the marketing design side of things, and Patrick Godin, who's, who's who I work with a little closer because I. I'm his Europe guy, if you like, and he's yeah. he's he's actually busy expanding the, uh, uh, the 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 markets because we've always enjoyed good success, and we're over seventy countries around the world. But he's really expanded what we do in South America, and specifically the Asian mar uh, market. So we've got a lot more guitars being shipped to the Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. right across Asia, and uh, he's been quite active in India. And uh, these are new markets that we've always you know just done okay with. But Patrick's gone out and, and got assembled some teams, so. When he says we're building close, you know, we're just about two hundred thousand guitars a year. We we're, we're we can't even keep up with what you're, yeah, you know. No, stock exactly. stock has become a problem. We're, we're working. At, 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 <laughs> it would be fair to say, at, at kind of maximum capacity. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It's it, I mean, it's, a, it's a nice problem to have. It is. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so does this does this create a call for expansion? Yes. Does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Uh, we're 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 actively looking for another warehouse and this is something that Robert spoke to me about. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to say this, <laughs> but, but I think it's okay. Um, last time I was with them at the factory, we have a few factory tours a year and we don't do too many because, again, unlike other uh, uh, guitar builders, we don't have these... Our factories are working, uh, yeah. are working factories, yeah. so we don't have guided tours by someone in a, in a nice shirt and, and, and a tag and, look, you know, you come to a factory tour, you're literally walking in and, excuse me, and jumping over someone that's working on the guitar and they're real life people using their hands it's playing these guitars. Hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah we same thing. we've got a day shift, we've got a night shift and we've got an, uh, an overnight shift where most of it is just cleaning and mm -hmm. getting the factory ready to start over again, so... We literally need more space. Robert was saying to, last time I was with him, yeah, there's an area there. I'm looking at another factory, or I can add on to this, and I got to look into the zoning. So it's, 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 it's full, it's, you know, full guns a blazing. We're just, we're just yeah. going on. Mm -hmm.